My name is TJ Templeton. I'm a conceptual artist and the director of the Bunker Center for the Arts in Kansas City. I started at the Bunker Center for the Arts in 2017. Um, I've been here now for seven years and a few months. Um, we started off with uh, uh, being basically a secret in town. Nobody really knew about us and our first Friday receptions, our first few had zero attendees and uh, now it averages about 150 to 200 people. So we, we've grown quite a bit in the last seven years and we continue to grow. Bunker was started in 2014 by a property uh, investor and metal sculptor named Jim Adams. He actually lives in Texas, but he bought this property. Uh, part of it was to take advantage of a tax abatement for arts related businesses in the Crossroads District in Kansas City. So this Bunker Center is his baby and uh, an example of the success of the tax abatement program that City Council set up here for the arts. I'd like to involve ourselves with uh, other organizations here in the community. Um, right now we're looking at uh, collaborating with uh, Agnes Arts and the Plug Gallery as well as uh, Belger and Studios Inc. We're all in kind of the same neighborhood on the East Crossroads and I really think that uh, if we band together uh, we can probably all share a lot of the resources and traffic that we get and I think that would benefit all of us. Uh, we are also very fortunate to be able to uh, assist uh, artists in their career. Um, a lot of people come in here looking for their first show and I'm always happy to help emerging artists do just that. So being able to see artists come out of nowhere and actually get um, recognized and to get some sales that always feels really good. I have been involved in art since I was a child. Um, my father uh, would bring home these giant rolls of paper home from General Mills where he worked and that was that was my recreation. I had just like literally like a hundred yards of paper and sharpie markers and I could just do whatever I want and it just became kind of like how I identify myself. Everything I do I express visually um, and, and through different types of media, but it all started right there. I first started being collected in about 1993. Uh, an art dealer by the name of Tom Dethridge kind of took me under his wing and helped me get into several collections. Uh, I think one of the most rewarding experiences uh, of my art career since then has probably been able to be exhibited in a museum. Uh, it, was, it was kind of a bucket list thing for me and, and uh, I was actually able to achieve that just a, a year ago. It was the Museum 21C here in Kansas City. Uh, it was a piece, a multimedia piece that I had done. Uh, my artistic process is conceptual in nature, so I think of the ideas first and then I figure out how I'm going to execute them. So in some instances, something may need to become an oil painting on linen, like what I have behind me. Other things, like um, one project that I did was about child labor and the artwork that came from it was actually made out of sardine cans and encaustic image transfers. So I never really know how I'm going to uh, express an idea until I'm actually expressing it. I, I tend to work uh, in two-dimensional, but I will very often stray into other areas. In fact, in a couple weeks, I'm going to be doing a performance, which is really unusual for me. Moving forward, <clears throat> right now, um, it's very personal, um, it's very autobiographical, and most of the work that I'm working on right now is uh, drawing, painting, and screen printing. Uh, I try not to rely too heavily on screen printing because I do have a great deal of technical skill in painting and drawing, but I really like the fact that you can reuse the screens and you can do a series of the work, you know, utilizing those tools. So the, the, the work that I'm gonna be going into here in the future uh, will basically just be about a, a, a personal trauma that I went through and how I'm working through it and trying to uh, trying to heal uh, with making art expressing myself in two-dimensional forms. So my most recent project was a thing called Abundance and what that was was a statement about social stratification, what it means to be a have or a have not. Uh, the painting behind me is a work in progress, but it's, it's part of that series. Uh, this is the aerial view of a homeless camp that was on the side of our building. And so for this exhibition, I had um, eight images of the homeless camp done in different ways, uh, charcoal, acrylic, um, uh, screen printing. Um, so an example of that would be like right there. 
Um, that piece is the same image as this, but it's just a different treatment. Like I said, I'm a conceptual artist, so I think of the idea and then I figure out how I'm going to do it. The other side of the gallery for that show was these refrigerator door paintings, and there it's, it's the same thing. Screen printing, charcoal drawing, acrylic painting, any kind of mark making that is uh, archival, I'll, I'll put to use. And uh, so the idea of this show was we had the homeless person's idea of abundance. His name was Sean, and I got permission to use his, his image and his, and his camp in my show. Uh, but he, he didn't feel like he was homeless. He felt like he was on top of the world. And all of these things that were around his sleeping area, that was his abundance. And I had spent so many years as a starving artist, my abundance was the fact that I finally have a fully stocked fridge. So contrasting Sean's abundance with my abundance on the other side of the gallery, you had this wall was all refrigerator doors. And I think that that, I think that was a very well executed uh, statement that show came out very clearly. I think the audience really understood what I was trying to say with that. Uh, when I had a gallery in Lincoln, Nebraska, this artist by the name of Kim Darling did this performance piece where she entered the gallery with this entourage and she had this huge crazy wig on. And the entourage was carrying the wig behind her as she was walking, they were carrying her hair. She sits down in this throne and next to her is a bowl with uh, chewing gum in it. And visitors to the gallery were invited to chew some bubble gum and then stick it in her hair. And for the next two weeks, people were coming into my gallery talking about that show. Everybody loved it. And so here we are, that was, that was probably 2014. So here we are 10 years later, I'm still thinking about it. So I'm kind of running with her idea. And what I'm doing is, uh, it's, okay, so the book of Ezekiel apparently describes angels as being covered in eyeballs. And I guess the biblical uh, description of, or depiction of angels at times are clusters of eyeballs of wings, okay? So I'm doing a performance called Make Me an Angel. And I've got the wings, I'm gonna be semi-nude, I've got the wings, I've got the halo, and I'm gonna be sitting on this little like cloud-like throne with a bowl of about 2,000 googly eyes that are self-adhesive. And everybody's invited to come stick eyeballs on me throughout the course of the evening. So it's, it's just kind of a fun art for art's sake thing. There's no real deep meaning to it yet. Uh, but, you know, every now and then I'll do something like this and the audience, somebody in the audience, will have some kind of deep meaning. Like, well, you know what this could say? You know, so it's, it's something that the, uh, the, the observer can actually kind of define and put their own meaning into as well. I, I think one of the most rewarding parts of my career at the Bunker Center has just been seeing us get on the map and being having the opportunity to be on the radio and on television to talk about the Bunker Center and to really kind of expand our reach in the community. So when I think about the future of the Bunker Center for the Arts as well as my own career, uh, I, I really want to see an expansion of the Bunker Center. Right now we have 10 studios. I would like to help more artists than just 10 studios. I would like to see us maybe have more of a footprint in the Kansas City area. Um, as far as my own personal career goes, I would like to be in a permanent collection of a museum. That is, that is my end goal, um, and that's what I'm working towards. Ho hopefully five years is all it will take. So I'm TJ Templeton, the director at the Bunker Center for the Arts in Kansas City, Missouri. We're located on the corner of 19th and Troost in the East Crossroads. And I really encourage you to come to our first Fridays. We always have something good going on.